Morning all. I'd like to take you to an earlier critical position in my game on Monday night, which was uh, a very difficult challenge theoretically. My opponent was 2.12 ECF actually, so the highest rated I played in the Hearts League. And I thought I had a very good position here with black. I've got control of this d4 square, because earlier I just played this rook e3 move. Uh, and after taking, taking, I played bishop takes b2. Perhaps also knight d4 was interesting. But we arrive at this situation, my opponent has just played now knight e5. So I've got this critical choice. Do I want to take this with either bishop or the knight? And I recommend to get the most out of this video, I want to send you this um, question. Which piece would you take with the bishop or the knight? And I think the more you can think about this, like pause the video now and work out some reasons or variations, to either intuitive reasons or variations or both. And if you can do that, uh, pause the video. I'll give you 10 seconds to pause the video starting from now. So the question is, what would you take with the knight or the bishop? If we restrict the question to that, and why? So 10 seconds starting from now. OK, before turning on an engine computer, I'm going to try and uh, sh show you my reasoning for this intuitively, now this position. Uh, I unfortunately, I mean I say unfortunately took with the bishop. I'll tell you why uh, I think this is unfortunate. After f takes e, how has the position changed? Why it has a dangerous potential past pawn? I've got a past pawn as well, actually, technically. So there's issues surrounding the past pawn. Can it be blockaded? Uh, there's an issue with the bishop pair. This bishop can actually be exchanged off, though, with knight d4 as well, by force, to rob white with the bishop pair. And here, there's a nice blockade with the knight. But also the knight does support f5. In this position, given that white is going to lose the bishop pair and his king saves is going to be slightly weakened, I believe overall uh, that taking with the bishop is actually better. From an engine perspective, actually, it, it's given us a slightly better to take uh, with the bishop. Another alternative is actually if if take non not taking is an alternative with rookie eight apparently or queen c seven to rookie eight pinning or queen c seven but I, I just want to restrict choices to either bishop takes e five or knight takes e five for you to consider. Uh, so basically in the game and you'll see from the, the critical position video uh, earlier on this channel that here I thought this this was quite good. To, to be able to play bishop d4 with tempo. But really, uh, the issues remaining in the position are actually not just that white has a pass pawn and I've got this pass pawn, that I might have to blockade this, that this might be loose. But also my pawns are on the same colour as the bishop. So ideally, actually, this decision also goes well into the end game to do with uh, peace and pawn harmony that taking with the bishop actually means uh, that this situation, uh, three of the issues are kind of supported, that I'm not left with bishop on the same colour as pawns. Uh, as an example, let's say rook f2, which is one of the better moves, and I take this, this position, uh, my bishop is not on the same colour as pawns, the knight is handling uh, the pass pawn with a potential blockade, and also if say knight e6, I think okay, there, m there might be some, some dangers in theory. I mean, the game's not over just because I've got a nice blockading knight, chess is not that easy. But here, um, instead of taking on g2, in fact, it might be quite significant to try and keep this tension and put on the pressure, knowing that the knight is now supporting the pawn as well with rook g8, for example. This apparently, 
this is okay and there might be some serious threats heading White's way here. So taking for example like this, this just looks very uncomfortable. But here after Queen C6 we have a situation where um, you know what is White going to do here? I've got a nice looking position. Um, if E6 if this pawn is taken, okay, there's, there's a problem here that White's just taking on f5 after, and it could end up um, being tricky. This is this is about equal this position. Sometimes you know the bishop is also going to be good munching my pawns in this end game. So this, this is actually quite a concern. But apparently, you know, if with precision this position is okay. Apparently, like rook g6, and actually that that's a liability now that pawn. So. It's actually uh, in, in favor of black technically if we're, we're checking one engine in this position. But yeah, I mean, there's plenty of resources left for both sides. I'm not saying that this is a necessarily a strategically winning position, but it's actually, it looks uh, for these reasons that there's the issues are actually addressed, uh, that blockading is, is easier to achieve, it would seem. Uh, supporting the pawn is easier to achieve, and potentially useless bishop with the same color of. Of the pawns is kind of avoided. Um, so contrast this with the other decision that was made. So bishop takes e, sorry, knight takes e5. For some reason, I was, I, I think I played this a bit too quickly without really considering uh, the, the positional implications. Uh, if you consider, you know, a player like Nimzovic or Petrosian, they'll be crazy about blockades and the possibility of blockades. So it seems that given that White will have uh, a pass pawn here in the center that if you want to get a quick blockade sometimes it is better just to give up the bishop you know like the Nimzu engine in principle you get a nice nice knights when you when you voluntarily give up the bishop in the Nimzu engine defense here voluntarily giving up the bishop gets actually a nice blockade square and from an engine point of view this is this is like more than half a pawn this is more than it's about 0.62 to, to, to white uh, so like rook f2, this is the engine line. Bishop takes g2, rook takes queen c6, and there's, you know there's, n there's nice light square pressure. And for a while, you know White's going to be struggling, um, you know, with with this situation. I think uh, this this would have been, um, you know, an interesting position. If if the knight is challenged like this, I mean, let's have a look at an example end game. We end up with this potential. Blockade. I think it might be okay to blockade here rather simply with knight e6, but um, maybe an even more precise move is knight c6, and then go with the king here for a blockade. So um, yeah, I I just think I I played a move a bit too uh, quickly here when actually. Um, you know, deciding which piece to keep on here is actually a very interesting thing. Uh, you know, to get right in similar positions, to look at the underlying issues that the new position would create when the pawn is taken here, and to kind of enumerate the issues and see how the remaining piece would be good in that climate. You know, of the pass pawn here, of pressure on f5, and overall, given that is is the climate of the position now. When White has that passport, it would seem that you know taking an, a knight d4 overall looks uh, positionally a wiser choice. I've, I think these things are backed up with variations and precision after to actually make sure this this isn't just just aiming for a, a pretty knight straight away. Um, you know, if if Black played a bit too sloppily uh, here, you know, if I took say and and then played say knight e6. I mean, this is going to be, you know, a move like this might allow queen d5. And here, you know, it's not much to write home about. There, there's pressure on the black position. So you can see how, uh, you know, precision is, is important. There's actually a tactical move here. The bishop's not as, as dead as doorpost. Bishop h4, trying to get rid of the blockading knight. And white would still have a certain pressure. So it has to be played uh, carefully at all times. The position, the resulting positions, you know, not a massive advantage here, but it was just interesting to consider uh, the issues that are created by the, the change in in the position. You know, the passport here, the passport here, potential for blockade. 
getting rid of White's bishop pair. There was also actually attractive dynamic possibilities if if White kind of slips up here, uh, like Rook f4. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure what the idea of Rook f4 was from the engines. Uh, maybe it was just to block f4. But if if White kind of um, you know doesn't play that accurately here there's actually some interesting uh dynamics going on for black like rook g8 now uh potentially you know threatening some nasty stuff uh if e6 maybe there's always like rook e8 the knight is is doing a fine job as also supporting that f5 it means with this knight that the the other pieces are actually freer because it's handling the issues quite well uh so yeah, I think I think when you've got a decision, maybe in your own games, and you've got you've got some time in your clock, it's not just a blitz game. It's interesting to consider the um, the look the longer term implications of what pieces are left on, what the issues are, how good they are at addressing the issues. Uh, so I thought I'd mention that from an earlier critical position uh, of this game. I hope you got something out of this. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.